Well, it's Monday morning, and I can already tell it's one of them mornings. So, should have done this a lot earlier. Well, I thought it was frost, and here I am, lovely heathen mirrors, scraping my windows off in April. April 8th, it wasn't frost, it was in fact freezing rain, back windows nicely uh, <laughs> um, privacy tinted, privacy tint, so that I uh, can't see in or out, but you never know, right, but uh, turn the heat and crank her up, and I'm off to work. so I can feed the fishies and I got my Keurig warming up I think it's warm now but I remember that I have a lot of stuff that's in the truck that I bought over the weekend for the globe the red red globe and I gotta go all right hopefully no more Jim Bob sneaking up on me <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with the donut hole coffee for this morning I don't know seems to be a good coffee actually now that I got used to it and big cup because big cups what I like best I am starting to run low on the uh, on the creamer I love this stuff all you gotta do is pour it in there you don't have to friggin mix it or put any sugar the procure egg uh, ends up mixing the stuff for you anyhow you just have a little off the side and then it circulates in there so anyhow, I got my jacket on still because I'm going to go out there and I'm going to get my stuff out of the truck. So this is what I got from Canadian Tire. Uh, I picked up two of these guys that are medium, medium fine. So coarse and fine. And these uh, are like foam bricks. Yeah, it's easier to get them out in the store. There you go. Yeah, just a foam brick with the sandpaper wrap to it so you got corners that you can use it's very awesome I got two of them they're like only two bucks each and this is the uh, 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 screwdriver bit set too uh, so it's got those stupid things uh, I know it's got that magnet tray and a whole bunch of screwdrivers the ratchet driver and the main reason I bought it was that precision screwdriver set <laughs> I'm literally like an inch away and it comes in a nice, nice little bag and has a lifetime warranty and that was another reason and this great big demolition bitch got the spade I don't know if it shows up under there but it's a great big pry bar so that's the same thing on the back tips and sizes and Includes insulated drivers with vinyl covered blades, safe up to a thousand volt alternating current. Ooh. I still can't believe that that was 76% off the price, so it was $29.99 and it was regularly $170 something. Oh well, lifetime guarantee. And as I'm sitting here sipping on my coffee, which is pretty good, I just remembered something. I managed to kind of get around the editing problem that I've been having. 
I was using recommended settings, which is the um, 1920 by 720, which I think is uh, the only setting that there is for HD. But as soon as I go to recommended settings for to display on a computer, bam, just poops them out. I just uh, it must be just too much for it or something like that. I just can't do it. So anyhow, I managed to get uh, three, yes, three of them done yesterday and uploading. That's how far behind I am. I don't know, it's, I got yesterday's to do and then I wanted to do a, kind of a cut and paste from um, the one where I went around to Boundary, Rafferty, Sirius, Woodlawn, stuff like that and make it just a video of just that. So uh, we'll see what happens, but uh, uh, also the media player that's on there too, like every so often you get the exclamation mark that's inside of the yellow triangle and basically you know you try to play that file and it's just nope, it is corrupted, you must remove from your playlist to be able to save this. And like no. I found out what you do is you kind of rewind it a little bit into the previous uh, the previous window I guess or uh, clip and then you hit play again and as it gets towards the end it kind of checks the next one you know to see the progress of it or if it's uh, finished rendering or uh, getting ready for movie maker to play with and then uh, kind of like, oh well yeah it is there it is there okay and then it transitions into the next one okay so I did that last night for what was it? 52 scenes I did that way. There was a lot of um, start and stop in the other day, so yeah, and it put it out right, except for for some reason. Once again, the music shifted somehow. It was the last thing I put in there, and then all of a sudden there's a blurb at the beginning, and um, kind of like okay, it make makes some people go like what the hell kind of thing, but. And then when it gets to the driving scene, it's a little bit of a delay, and then the music starts, and it kind of carries into the first talking scene, but, meh. <laughs> I was kind of rolling with it, I'm like, I'm not going to wait another day for this to render again. Sorry, guys. So, um, got that all done, and um, I didn't run it through Handbrake because it's only a gig and something, because it's not HD video. And uh, I just got that uploading. 80% uh, of the third one uploaded overnight since midnight, I think it was. I have no uh, round clocks in here anyhow. And um, no analog. So uh, got that going, and then this other one's going to be going up while we're both at work today, so it shouldn't really in impact anybody. But hopefully this is all done and caught up and stuff, and then uh, I can actually enjoy my evenings at home. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I'm planning on possibly tonight going for walking too, so, yeah. I won't, uh, won't take time out of my editing for that. I remember to bring this stuff in. This is um, some of the stuff I get to work on here. I bought a high lift cab, and there's the box. There's supposed to be the interior. I'll have to look up to see if this is actually for a high lift. Uh, brand new tailgate. Um, not sure what those are for. But uh, here's a set of clear. Clears behind here. That's when my thumb's on the clear. Hard to see on the viewfinder at least. And um, nice 80s era <laughs> fog lights and <laughs> yellowed lights and stuff. Uh, uh, brand new windshield for inside the truck. Here we have a uh, front and rear axle. Um, the rear needs work though. It's seen better days but I'm going to pull it apart see how the transfer case and all that stuff is in there. Or the, the pinion and gears. The front one, it seems to be okay. It actually seems to be in pretty good shape. I just got to pull it apart and check all the nuts and bolts and stuff in there. Uh, frame there's this, and this, and there's the uh, cross member um, tra transfer case protector. But um, other than that, I think the frame is kind of um, a loss. It has been hacked down the sides to make wider, 
I don't know what for, but it has. Also, the fronts and rears have been hacked off. But there is a high lift three speed transmission here. So, this is pretty much the same thing as a semi, except for motor sits up here on a semi on the front side, and this out the back goes right to drive. It doesn't come down a, lot, a notch and go out the back and out to the front. So, And the mounts are different. It's got two here and two here. And the semi has one here, one here that mounts down on top of the frame, not in the frame. So um, that's what I'm going to be doing. And that's uh, another big reason why I picked up that uh, precision screwdriver kit set. Because I want to be able to take all these stuff apart and not strip any screws and crap like that so um, I won't need precisions for all of them but I will need good screwdrivers so uh, I think I'm gonna tear into those axles first and see what happens I think mm, it looks like the three speeds put together with bushings so see what happens there okay after much parting and going through stuff and everything later this here is the front axles and this is my good one now I pulled this completely apart I still got four screws to put back in but I went through it opened it up looked through the diffs and everything like that um, this one's now my bad one because over here is broken you can see that's not supposed to move and this one here I um, changed halves around and stuff but I had to pry this off because the wrong screw was used in there and the head was rounded off and everything. Um, there is some bearings and stuff in here I can pick out of it still. This tool came in very, very, very handy. I was able to pick out um, nuts and sand and washers, stuff like that. So pretty much got her all together. Uh, one thing that's neat about these axles, you can see right in there, let me turn it around. Maybe I gotta turn on some light for you guys. There we go. You can see right there, that's a little um, Allen screw. And if I flip her around, there's the back side of her. So let's turn it back and hopefully, there we go. So if I wanted to, when I don't want this axle to be locked for some reason, I can take my Allen screw and put it inside there and undo it and hopefully pull it out without <laughs> dropping it inside the front diff here. And um, turn that off. And I can unlock it. So right now it's locked. So if I turn the other one, the other one turns, etc. But if I didn't do that, it would just turn the pinion shaft and that would be it. So, anyhow, um, that's what's done for that. Uh, next thing I'm pulling apart is the three speed and I'm going to see what it looks like inside. I, I don't imagine you can really screw up a transmission, um, maybe some sand or debris or something like that in there, but I'll take a look and see what I find. So I'll just get into the transmission here and tearing it apart. There's your normal wear and tear and grease on the gears and everything. It looks really nice inside. There's standoff from side to side. There's all the nylon gears and stuff like that. It actually looks really good inside. Uh, get the some shifting action going on here. So there's all the different gears, and I think it. Uh, I think it's fine inside. It does have bushings, but um, what can you really wear out in the transmission? And just. Um, Spins the same way all the all the time over and over again. A little thread lock compound and stuff. But um, I don't know. I'd say she's okay. That was a little fun to get apart, but I figured her out. Uh, I did take the case the cover off here and checked it. Gear mesh is okay and everything. There's no gears chewed or anything. To uh, change the motor, I just got to take this case off because uh, it's on the shaft here at the bottom. You just have to pull it ahead and you can slide it off to the side and then I can change out the motor. So, uh, one leads come off, but oh, that's nothing. Bullet connectors. Somebody took their time and made this. Made it right. So, uh, she's good. 
All right, well, once again here playing with the tires, and um, I don't know if you guys know this, but they look a little different. It's because they are. These are the stock front rims, which I had the tire sitting on for a while. But the back is got a plain hole in there just for put bearing in or bushing, etc., and free rolling. Now that these are going to be powered, I use the hex. So what I did is use the rear axle. It's the dual, so normally it sits like that. Then you got your one for your outside sits in there, and they sit together, and they touch in the middle there, and you put some nuts and bolts through there, and holds them together. But I uh, put them on each side. I am going to mount them on my front axle. See what it looks like. Alrighty, so that's what it looks like mounted. So um, other than the fact that you got a, a lot of stuff sticking out the side here. Gives you enough uh, bite to make some nice hubs on there if you wanted to. But it's all together, and you can see that the top spins. But um, she rolls nice and easy, actually, other than, you know, it's binding because there's no linkage from axle to axle. But that's it, that's my front axle. Now I'm getting springs, uh, frame. And what else? Um, spring frames. There was some other part. I can't remember what it is offhand. Uh, but uh, anyhow, they're coming from uh, Semi Joe. Um, he made the frames for my last truck, and I really liked them, and so I'm going to get them again. And you can see here, I will have to make a cover for this or get a cover for the high lift front. That other one um, pretty much useless unless I can get the screws out of it, but also it uses those little tiny screws. All the more fun. But anyhow, um, yeah, I just gotta figure. And then I don't know if this is on the right side because it looks like it might, hmm, it goes high enough, it might not interfere with this. But it's just a matter of these four screws and flipping them around to the other side and having the steering link on the front side, but I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Until then, I have a, yay, I got my fir first axle rolling. Okay, so back here to these axles again. I was noticing something when I was playing around with them. Uh, I wish that cup sticks out compared to that cup. Uh, it doesn't quite work right, and you know, zoomed all in here, you can see that there's actually some nicks and stuff in the axles, and you know, I guess it's been played with pretty good. So anyhow, that only turns that sharp, but this one turns like pretty much, this is dead on from the axle, that's as sharp as that turns, and that's as sharp as that turns. That's right over center hub, and that's right over center of hub. So uh, quite a difference. I actually was on the Evil Bay, I found a guy selling new plastic halves, that's all it is. No internals, no hardware, just the two halves. So it was $10 and $5 shipping. So I bought one. I got that. Um, I bought new uh, spindle carriers here, spindle hubs. They were 14 bucks for a metal ones from Stella Hobbies. I love that kind. And now I'm just trying to find new cups that have this part here. It's That's all one part. In fact, I actually see that this is kind of bent, so that's probably why this wheel wobbles so bad. But uh, Evil Bay is kind of letting me down there, not really finding it. So anyhow, I'll have a heck of a lot of high lift halves and parts and stuff. But that other one comes with the two plastic halves, and actually comes with all the screws and nuts, and the cover for the diff. And I, I couldn't pass that up, so I did that. I got all the internals now. And uh, once again, Evil Bay to the rescue. You can see me <laughs> in the reflection. Parts bag D. Looked like, um, you know, some uh, link ends and stuff like that. And I saw some bushings and I was like, huh, I wonder. Next picture. Dun da da da. One, two, three, four. Steering linkages and everything and ends and a little parts bag with it. And I think this was 
17 bucks, some shipping. And it's all the parts I want, and it's 25% off, so I figured, oh, what the heck? Might as well get her. So now I'll have pretty much completely new axles. I'm pretty sure, actually, maybe even that parts bag has, um, oh, it, yeah, it does. Um, the top of these here, there's little bushings that, for the spindle to swivel inside the housing case here. It has them. So, because I didn't have the um, differentials or the uh, the spindles or the drive shafts inside, cost me the extra money. But it uh, looks like the parts are actually quite cheap on e Evil Bay. So um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff coming. And friggin' phones going off. Well, I guess that was uh, the iPad because my iPhone makes different noise. So now I just gotta wait for more. And now that I know clearance isn't an issue and stuff like that for this, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm just waiting for a reply back from Buddy Joe with uh, costs for frame and stuff like that that I'm getting from him. And then I uh, pay him his money and see what it costs to get shipped here. Can't ship it to... Uh, US side there because he uses USPS and unless I have a PO box number down there they won't ship it to me so uh, and it's not just as simple as going down there and getting one or else trust me I would have by now that there's a like four page waiting list and that includes residents that actually live down there so yeah alright she's later in the day she's almost down to three o'clock been working on uh, a little bit of this here. I got the uh, sanding block out, and yep, yeah, I tore into the truck. Uh, I tried to get as much as the extra on over and stuff like that as I could off. See, there's like a little bit along here and stuff that I just couldn't get out, but it's smooth. I think maybe I got to do a little bit underneath there still, but uh, I'm trying to smooth it out as best as I could. That's so true. That's my mom's ringtone. She's calling back with nothing to say, but she wants to chat. And uh, she talks about how dad's getting fat and the cat and stuff. And I don't know. That's freaking hilarious. But yeah. Uh, so I'm going to sand that a little bit. I blew it dry with compressed air and then washed it off with a damp rag. Um, the point is to get all the. Um, sanding uh, dust and stuff off of there and then get all the grease and stuff from my hands and that it's not like they're terribly dirty but you know everyone's got grease on their fingers okay so now I topped her up here uh, I just turned on the vent so I can suck some air past it and dry it off a little faster I still got a couple hours at the end of the day but I figured get her dried up now and she should be good the uh, last guy there that just left he's a regions driver and um, he's like, what, are you making a scale model of one of our trucks? And uh, I looked at it better, and I looked at his truck, and uh, the red's almost the same color. It's kind of scary. I thought, you know, deep purplish color kind of match. You know, you'd think it'd be somewhat like that. But um, nope, I guess we're going bright red. And I hope that there's enough in here. I'm going to go really light coats. I'm going to put uh, at least two more really, really light coats on there. And I'm not going to like try to cover up the white right away. I'm just going to lay her on there and let her dry. Lay her on there, let her dry. And uh, hopefully she should be good from there. So we'll see what happens in, I don't know, give her 10, 15 minutes to dry off. All right, well, it's been an hour or so later. Buddy Tom was by. He brought me some coffee. That was awesome because I just turned the Keurig on and he showed up, so I shut it off again. But uh, got her all painted up. Uh, a little bit of run still again. I think she's going to need some more touch-ups. But uh, we'll see what happens in a bit after she dries. So uh, it is getting to be about what four four o'clock almost here now. You can probably you can read that three fifty one. Yep, yeah, still. And. Um, that's about it. 
we're just kind of figuring out stuff and I was showing him the truck and the high lift here and he's kind of like oh wow and now he's kind of getting the bug that he wants one again <laughs> buy one <laughs> so um other than the paint fumes and stuff like that uh, buddy's still out for the city working pushing garbage says it's it's a mess up there people don't know how to dump garbage right they just go wherever they feel like and uh that's good enough for them kind of thing so anyhow i probably got to clean up in here pretty soon i gotta get uh gotta get the floor done here and stuff and i gotta put away stuff and not leave it sitting out and everything like that with the big uh hey steal me sign on there because uh people love that kind of thing i gotta get stuff out to the truck and that and uh pack it up because uh one thing I do not do out here, I do not leave anything of value because the old place kept on getting broke into a few times. Uh, last time it was broke into was on, get this, free weekend. Yeah, the day like we don't handle cash or anything other than, you know, an odd Joe Blow that shows up from the RM. And um, no money there whatsoever because we don't leave money in the building. And, uh, come out to work and the doors kicked in and they went through the drawers and looks like they were pissed off they didn't find anything and smashed a couple things and left fun times alrighty it's after five here now just closing up for the end of the day I had to go check on appliances some guy said he threw something out that was the wrong thing or something but uh, I don't see it anywhere. Anyhow, uh, got a fellow tuber out here. There he comes. I came in right at the end of the day here, kind of thing, so. Just kind of getting him on the way out here. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyhow, uh, I couldn't find what Buddy was talking about, so. Uh, I don't know what he's on, but. Who knows? And it's nice and frozen here kind of thing, so uh, hopefully tomorrow should be okay. But anyhow, I got to make sure, put the pile on across the scale here and everything. I've been kind of avoiding parking in my regular spot because uh, friggin' mud and everything like that. I'll be right back. Friends joining me. We're gonna go to Sobeys. Gotta do a mail run. Get some stuff for supper, maybe. It's snowing. And yes, it's a uh, minus seven out and still friggin' snowing. And damn, that wind is still cold. Anyhow, uh, we're heading out. To, uh, anywhere else you wanted to go? Red Lobster. We don't have Red Lobster. So I can wait. I wish we had Red Lobster. But uh. We'll see you guys later, I guess. So um, we went to Sobeys and went to the letter mail office, tried to send this to the United States and the incompetent worker in there does not know how to send a letter to the United States. Something kept popping up where they wanted to use uh, some customer loyalty program card 
And it's like, no, I don't have that. And it kept on asking for it and wouldn't do it. So then we tried buying a bubble envelope and tried doing it that way so I could get the proper insurance on it. No deal. I did pick up this parcel, which is supposed to be the iPhone 5, some kind of armor case thing, which Lord knows I need because I keep on friggin' breaking my phone somehow. So anyhow, I got that and I guess gotta send it to the post office or something. I don't know, send it with parents tomorrow or something. Because it's gotta get mailed and it's gotta get signed and insured for. So I'm not pretty sure they're not gonna be happy that's gonna be a day late anyhow. So um We're gonna bring these bananas into a restaurant because we're too lazy to go home. <laughs> She went shopping and got bananas, and we I'm can't hungry. leave it in the vehicle because it's minus seven out. They would be black by the end of the night. So, uh... We'll see how this goes, if they, like, tackle <laughs> me, get the bananas out of here, or if they'll be like, It's oh, what, it's Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday? No, Monday night. Yeah, it's Monday, dude. I don't think there's any It's specials. not Taco Tuesday. Yeah, no Taco Tuesday. We could always, you know, go for Taco Tuesday anyways on a Monday, although it's Taco Tuesday. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna go to the Grasshopper. They have decent food there. Might as well. It's not very far away either, so that's another plus. And be Monday night, it's not like it's gonna be a full bar. The big they'll have forbidden bananas. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and stuff's all over the dash of the truck. Uh, moisturizing the lotion. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, we're gonna head out now. And it's well, it's nice and uh, snowing right now, too. Just a gentle snow. Not a dear God, we're gonna die snow. The good kind. Okay, well, we had uh, supper here at the Black Grasshopper. And uh, it was pretty awesome. My bananas are still alive. <laughs> They're still yellow. It's okay. They're so, there. They're there. Some good news and some bad news. Uh, good news is, is we had awesome food. She had ribs and I had the um, uh, balloons. Uh, what the heck was it I called? The Ultima Burger. 20 ounce burger, which I'll put in here. And, um, wow, I could not finish that. Uh, it's crazy, so I got lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> I know, just got to remember to take it to work with me. Um, that, and then uh, I opened up the package for the um, I4, iPhone 5 Tantic cases. And, yeah, they are knockoffs. Yeah, I crank that heat. Uh, I looked up uh, how my phone while I was in there and talking to Buddy uh, that went in on the cases with me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no. cover up those bananas. <laughs> we determined that by the <laughs> camera ports uh, for front and back that they are actually knockoffs. So when I get home, I guess i going to look through PayPal and see what I can do about that. Um, being they are knockoffs, I don't know if I want to keep them or not. I'm guessing not, because Buddy there, he's saying that uh, file claim with PayPal. And... Oh, jeez. Once again, the truck's on an angle, and it thinks that the, tank of, the gas tank is empty. We're going to die. What's the uh, truck app should tell me? Where is the truck apps? We're on, well, apparently a three-degree angle. Uh, leaning forwards, but I doubt that's actually three degrees. Maybe it's more. Two degrees, one degree, two degrees to the left. This is kind of awesome driving through the parking lot here and up and down. But anyhow, uh, gonna head home and probably call it a night. Our CMP guy's checking his friggin' bank account here at the credit union drive-through. That's kind of hilarious, but. Oh well, as long as he's doing that. Well, we'll see you guys probably tomorrow because I don't think anything else is happening for tonight. Was going to go walking, but my uh, back is not cooperating with me. So, too much walking and then uh, that uh, Sobeys in the post office. And, uh, if 
buggered me up. <laughs>